and this, this was one take, that's it. You can really only do one take every day, uh, which is having an incredible producing team, organizing everything, cueing everyone off camera. Well, look at that image right there. I mean, what what doesn't draw you to it? it, it you know, there's. Uh, I love the horizon. You know, I I just uh, I don't know why, but I just love it. This was filmed in Corsair, Arizona, and a place that I actually haven't been before until this film. And I learned about uh, Corsair through Jessica Bruder's book, and I drove to the actual event, the actual RTR. Uh, uh, six months prior, we start shooting, and there were ten thousand people there, you know. And and the one we created was the RTR that was ten years ago, so there's only fifty people there. And uh, when we shot it, the real one was happening at the same time, so it's a very interesting uh, comparison. I can't imagine what you're going through the loss of your husband and loss of your whole town and friends and village and that kind of kind of loss is never easy and uh, I wish I had an easy answer for you but I think you've come to the right place to find an answer I think that I think connecting to nature and and uh, to a real true community and tribe will make all the difference for you I hope so well, in this moment, Fern had just left where she's from, which is northern Nevada, in the cold landscape to the desert in Corset, Arizona, where there's a gathering of uh, nomads and van dwellers called the Rubber Trump Rendezvous, the RTR. Bob Wells, Swanky, and Linda May, three of our main supporting roles, are from Jessica Buder's book. She has gotten to know them and follow them for years. We did a lot of magic art landscape shots whenever we could, knowing that it would help time passing. The whole shoot is planned that way. It's based on time of day and seasons. And then we don't really start shooting until lunchtime, until after lunchtime, because we want to shoot into the evening. And we're really challenging ourselves. Like we're using the last 30 minutes to 45 minutes to shoot some of the dialogue scenes. And sometimes we would shoot a scene um, in two days, so then we can have consistent light. If you look at where that sun is, right? If the sun's any higher, you would have you would have blow things up, right? It, the, the sky wouldn't be the same. If it's any lower, you would lose details on what's, what's in front of it. And the, the shot continues until the ATV comes in as well. And Fran's reaction, Fern's reaction in that moment, she shook her head and laughed. It's genuine because friend thought that was an accident, the ATV <laughs> coming. Uh, but no, it was, it was planned. Uh, so, so we're very proud of that shot that it happened. Hey, Linda. Hello, join us. No, I'm just gonna take a little walk. Okay. Be back soon. <laughs> The score is simple um, and, you know, isn't too hopeful, you know, it isn't saying like, oh, everything is going to be just fine with this community. Um, it, it, it gives a feeling of a sunset, you know, I think. And and um, it really is just her for the first time in the film. She goes, I can stand still for a second and it's going to be OK, just mm -hmm. for a brief moment until everybody leave. And you feel that way a lot when you're on the road, you make that connection with both the land and the people. And then a few days later, a couple of weeks later, everyone leave. Uh, so you're constantly feeling this gain and loss and gain and loss. And, and as a result, you actually have a quite healthy relationship with how transient everything is.
you know, I love those video games. It's not like shooting or or zombies coming at me. I like the kind of video games where you just walk through beautiful landscapes and collecting、mm. wood and and you know, like the game, the trail.、Um, so we talked a lot about video games and and then how immersive it is. And to just follow a character and walking through this space, and the camera drifts, and and there's a lot to discover in the frame. So that's the conception of this shot. And our DP is really good at calculating because he's done this a few times now. The exact time of day where the sun is in the right place, and we're backlighting the character. And 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 this this was one take. That's it. You can really only do one take every day. Uh, which is having an incredible producing team organizing everything, cueing everyone off camera, and then our incredible sound design team just rebuild the entire soundscape. So you're not only、um, watching, but you're also hearing things. The sound of the tire of the bicycle, you hear it before you arrive because your your ears are actually getting much sharper when you're out there without all the city noises. I think. On Nomadland, I fell in love with the with the Ronan gimbal. We is what we shot this、uh, this on.、Um, the movie was so breaks out of time, you know, people just give up on it. And then the Ronan is amazing. And then they haven't really used it in big movies yet. By the time I went on to Eternals, there's very few people even know how to use it.、Um, and and we did we shot the Eternals ninety、uh, percent on the Ronan with with the same camera.